Hi, this is Melissa from Birch Center for Health and our new website, Food Underfoot. You can find us at www.foodunderfoot.com. And it's a beautiful April day here in Pittsburgh and I'm here to talk about one of my favorite herbs, which is mugwort or Artemisia vulgaris. And um, it's early in the spring. The, it's just started to come up from the ground. And um, here you can see last year's growth. This actually plant will get to about five feet tall. And, and we usually, for the uh, indications I'm going to mention, we actually wait till it's flowering to harvest it. But right now, it's very high in minerals. And I'm going to make a vinegar out of it for you today. And so I wanted to show you. Um, and tell you about it. We'll definitely talk about it some more. It is one of my favorite herbs. So actually, when we, we're outside our house right now, and when we moved in, there was no mugwort growing anywhere. And I've been doing um, walks down by the river, wild edible walks, and there's tons of mugwort down there. And I would just tell, you know, I talked about it all the time, about how it's my favorite herb. And then one day we came home and noticed a small little patch growing here. And um, since then, it's just taken over. It's it's definitely a, a weed in all its glory. So uh, I'm going to talk about how to identify it. So you can see it has these uh, nice green feathery leaves. And if you look on the underside of the leaves, they're white. And it's a white that does not rub off. They're actually tiny fibers. And um, this plant is actually one of the species of artemisias that's used in moxibustion for acupuncture. And it's these fibers that make the moxibustion. And we'll show you about that later in the year also. So when we harvest it and when it dries, you rub it in your hands and all the plant part goes away and what you're left with is the fiber. And it also makes a nice smudge for your house where you can you know, um, light it and it clears away some of the energies that you might not want in your house. It smells delicious. It actually, that's another way to identify it, is to just um, to smell it. It smells great. So it's, it's called mugwort again. And um, some herbalists like to call it crone's wort because it's actually a fantastic herb for women. In Chinese medicine, it's known as ai ye, A-I-Y-E, and it's used to warm the womb and stop bleeding. So for um, uterine bleeding, uh, cramps, and things like infertility, if it's due to a cold uterus, which that's what we diagnose in acupuncture, um, this is a great herb for that. And as Ella pointed out a little earlier, um, you don't want to take this if you're lactating, if you're nursing, because it will stop lactation. So that's a contraindication of this herb. Oh, another great thing it's used for is actually to uh, kill parasites. So Paul Pitchford, in his book, Healing with Whole Foods, has people drink this tea as part of his parasite cleanse. So, and again, when you want to make the tea and everything, you're going to wait till later in the season. But right now, we're going to harvest some of this young mugwort. Um, let me show you how to do that. And we're going to use it as, we're, I'm going to make a vinegar, and it, we'll go in the kitchen and I'll show you how to do that as well. And then we'll sample the vinegar at our workshop at the end of May. So that's on May 30th. If you're in Pittsburgh, please come to that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to sample a lot of different vinegars. Um, we're going to have mugwort vinegar, dandelion flour, garlic mustard, onion grass, and whatever else I can find and think of, and we'll just get to taste all the different vinegars. But So what we're going to do is just take a scissors and just kind of um, just cut these beautiful little mugwort leaves and it's not going to hurt the plant at all. This plant spreads underground and grows. There's some growing all the way up along our um, ramp here and so I already have a little bit of it here and and uh, I'm just going to take a little bit more just kind of gently cut it and there's a little bit of grass in there. We'll take the grass out but grass is actually edible and fantastic for you so if a little bit of grass gets in that's okay. But um, so right now I'm just going to make a small jar of it and that's about all I need and we'll go inside and I'll show you how to make the vinegar. Okay, so we're in the kitchen area now and um, I, I just wanted to mention also that we have some walks coming up. We have a walk this Saturday at Frick Park if you're in Pittsburgh and next Sunday which is the 26th and that is going to be down by the river and I can promise you there will be a lot of mugwort. So if you're interested in seeing it in, 
in person, please come to the walk. Um, the information I'm going to post below on the website, foodunderfoot.com. So it'll have the information about the workshop in May and the walks coming up. So we hope to see you there. But what I've done is I, I harvested it in the colander. I went over to the sink and I just rinsed it with water. Um, and now all I'm going to do, I'm not even going to cut it. It's very tender, young herb. I'm just going to fill this jar. And I, I might even have to be able to use a bigger jar, but I'm going to just kind of fill this jar with the, the mugwort I just harvested. And um, so we'll just show that in there. And OK, that's perfect. So you want to really fill it up. And then what I'm going to do is we have this organic um, apple cider vinegar. <laughs> and I'm going to just fill the jar again with the vinegar. And you want to use apple cider vinegar, not white vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is more of a kind of a real food vinegar. And so because we're going to ingest this, we are going to eat it. So we use um, organic apple cider vinegar. And now, because it's vinegar, if you have a plastic top, that's fine. But we have a metal top, and it, it will corrode with the vinegar. So I have, I'm going to take a piece of wax paper. And I'm just going to kind of cut a small piece of wax paper. And... Um, and just put that between the the lid, you know, underneath the lid to protect the lid from getting all corroded. Actually, center that a little better. So that'll be great. And then, uh, very important to label it, because even if you think that you'll remember, it's you know we're going to put up a lot of vinegars this year, and you know it's it's obvious to me what's in there now. But after a while, you know it all. It'll kind of look a little different as it sits in the vinegar. It's just a good idea. And how we label it is we write the herb. It's mugwort. We write the date. Today is 4-16-09. And the, what I put it in, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. And that's kind of the very basic that we need. Sometimes I also put where I harvested it from or, you know, if I have different batches or anything like that. But so right now, so you can use anything to label it. We happen to have this great um, tape that really sticks very well. But just make sure you put the label directly on the uh, plant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it away for a couple weeks and then I'm going to filter the um, the herbs out of the vinegar and just leave the vinegar, save the vinegar, that's what we're going to use. It's a very high mineral rich vinegar. You probably don't want it if you're nursing, if you're lactating because you really don't want to take this herb internally. It can stop lactations. Um, come and to our workshop and come to our walk. We hope to see you and enjoy the day. Thanks.